Uh, my name's Tara McGinn. I'm the president of CGI UK in Australia. Uh, we're a business consultancy um, firm who like to do complex projects for both the public and private sector. Um, I have about 6,000 folk who work for me. Um, and on the whole, uh, we, we are a mix of 75% male, 25% uh, female. Um, we have a gender pay gap that's now sitting around about 9%. Uh, when we started three, four years ago, it was in middle double digits. So we've made good progress in improving our gender pay gap. And indeed, we focus very hard on that every year. And we also focus very hard on ensuring that um, our women get the opportunity to move up uh, through the ranks. Um, so I'm here today to talk about um, a concept, one, two concepts in fact, one that's quite familiar to you all um, and that's uh, the glass ceiling and the second one which might be less familiar to you and that is the sticky floor. So we're going to talk a little bit about both of these. I'm going to give you some kind of life hacks to work out yourself whether you're in a firm that has a glass ceiling or indeed if you find yourself stuck to the floor um, and then we'll draw a couple of conclusions. So um, Kicking off then um, with the more familiar of the two concepts, and that namely is the glass ceiling. When when we think about this, it's quite disappointing, isn't it, to us all that, you know, 20, 30 years after I certainly first became aware of this concept, here we are still discussing it. Um, and just to, to remind ourselves, it's basically the, the, the situation you find yourself in where you get to the top of where you can logically get to, you're qualified to go to the next level and you find that you're unable to um, for lots of reasons, but largely because the, the opportunity in that company, um, they don't see that you're the natural candidate to step up. Um, so the first, the good news is that the glass ceiling isn't everywhere anymore. So, you know, my my thoughts are really that it's too many places for sure, but it's not everywhere. So my first ask to you is, you know, do you think you've got a glass ceiling in your organisation? Um, now, how could you tell is what you probably say back to me. And I'm going to give you a couple of top tips that you can get a pen and ponder in your own time. And then, you know, if you reach the conclusion that maybe you do have a glass ceiling, then we can talk about what we do about it. So the first one um, it would be largely around the um, gender pay gap, which I've just mentioned to you. Um, so... Number one, if your company is of a certain size, a couple of hundred employees, then your organisation has to lodge um, your uh, gender pay gap. And that's the law in, in this country. So, uh, you know, have a look. Print off the report. Have a little look at what your firm said. Have a look to see if it's got any better year over year since the last three, four years that we've been doing this. Um, and, you know, just take a view on if anybody's taking it seriously or just, you know, providing lip service to what is just basic piece of, piece of legislation. Um even more interesting for me, actually, right now is have a look to see if your firm has lodged its gender pay gap for uh, last year. So that's not the year that's just ended in um, end of March, April. It's the year before, um, because actually what the government did was it said that you didn't have to lodge your gender pay gap reporting because we were in a pandemic and you're all too busy to think about that. Uh, so you don't need to. Now, those of us who've been doing this for a few years will know that it isn't that difficult to lodge your gender pay gap. Um, and we've been doing it for a few years and, you know, we're a tech firm after all, so we've automated it. But um, even if we hadn't automated it, it's still a priority because we wanted the findings to see how we're doing. So if you are working for a company that hasn't done that and hasn't prioritised their women to the extent where they felt that they should, A, complete the gender pay gap and B, lodge it, then maybe that's a little sign that perhaps things aren't necessarily great in your company and perhaps you should have a think about whether or not that glass ceiling's still in place. So that's my first top tip. Um, have a look to see if that's the case. My second one is around uh, your board. So have a look who's on the board. Do you have women on your board at the moment? Um, if you do, great, but what sort of roles are they doing? Are they in the traditional female roles? So are they in HR or marketing or, you know, do they have a P&L and are they responsible for running an aspect of your business is my question. Because it's only truly when we have women that are representative of the actual business that we do and not the supporting industries that we are being taken seriously um, and therefore have a look at your firm and think, right, well, are women in the jobs that matter in my organisation, yes or no? 
um, has it improved again over the last few years and therefore are we trending to a position where this is getting better for me and for the women who come after me? So take that view. Next thing, um, next time you go to a meeting and you're sitting in a meeting, look around and think to yourself, am I the only woman in this meeting? Um, if the answer is yes, then have a think about your diary for the last week or two and have a look through the meetings that you've been at with your colleagues from your firm. Are they all the same? You know, are you largely the only woman on a meeting? Are you the only one who turns up because you're the only one who's invited? Because that's another sign that perhaps things aren't as they should be. Um, and, you know, if there's no improvement again, so then ponder how this was last year, the year before. If there's no coming through the ranks of women, then, you know, chances are that glass ceiling is well and truly still in play and you should bear that in mind quite carefully so that's my other thought and, and then my final thought on this do you or don't you have a glass ceiling is really around how it feels in your organization so you know what is the choice of language uh you know have you are you respected and and, and taken seriously as a professional um when you make a point do you sometimes feel that the language used against you is not equivalent to the language used against your male colleagues so what I mean is that people accuse you of being emotional when really you just care about the topic you're talking about you know are you, uh, are you ascribed emotional a language that is not necessary in this day and age you're just a professional who takes your job seriously because again you know if that's happening in your firm then you know you're probably you're probably working for a firm that's quite comfortable having a glass ceiling and, and let's be honest, I mean, why would a firm want a glass ceiling in this day and age? You know, that are, we, are we in a position where men are better qualified to do the jobs we do than we are? No, you know, modern times and, you know, certainly in the STEM sector, for example, science, technology, engineering and maths, you know, graduates in that space have gone up over the last few years and we're up at about 25% now of, um, of graduates coming off those courses are women. So there's lots of excellent talent. Um, in in those roles and also if you take more broadly into general management and finance etc then there are women available to do these roles so if your organization doesn't have women in these key, key jobs then chances are there's something more systemic going on and um, and you know I would think you know there are organizations that don't have glass ceilings so my next top tip to you all is do some research for where's better. You know, you are excellent. Maybe your current organisation doesn't deserve you. And if that's the case, then perhaps you should look to competitors and other organisations that don't have the same issues that you could take your skills and be more valued. And maybe your career could move on because they don't have a glass ceiling. So again, look to see if they have gender pay gap reporting, what it's looked like. Look to see what they have at the board. Look to see if they have women's networks. Reach out to women on LinkedIn and other social media platforms and see what they're saying about their organisation. And, you know, vote with your feet would be my, um, my suggestion because whilst the glass ceiling is still in play, it isn't in play everywhere and therefore there are choices. So that's the first part of my thinking. The second part of my thinking is more around the sticky floor. Now that's a different concept. So basically you may choose to argue that there's a glass ceiling in play and therefore you can't get any higher in your career. But what if after you've done all these checks, actually it's more about you and less about the organisation? So it could be that you are your worst enemy and it's you that's not backing yourself to getting on in your career. Um, I read recently that apparently about 75% of women in senior positions um, have um, suffered and continue to suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, you know, by that I mean that they feel that they're not really sure why they're in the role they're in or why they're at the meeting they're at, etc. Um, this is something personally that, you know, I, I struggle with as well. So, you know, less so on internal meetings, but sometimes I'm on an external meeting where I'll ask myself, you know, really, do I want to speak out at this point or not? You know, do, have, is what I'm saying uh, enough of value to, to contribute to this meeting? You've got to fight that. Um, you know, you what you have to say is important. And therefore, from a from an imposter syndrome point of view, you know, you need to tackle that head on. And if, if that's you then my advice to you would be to 
when you go to a meeting, make notes before you go. Think about what you want to say at that meeting. And then, you know, don't speak for the sake of it. But if the points that you wanted making haven't been made by yourself or someone else, then, then make sure that you, you do say something um, and that you take part in the meeting because you're there for a reason and you've been invited because of your expertise. So so that's kind of a key thing. You know, other areas where the sticky floor comes into play is just really you reaching out and, re and excelling at your potential. So, you know, make sure that you've got the training that you need to do the role that you need. Um, make sure that you've got a career plan and that you understand where you're going with your career and you ask yourself regularly, um, you know, is this, is this has been a good year for me? Do I have objectives that I understand that, you know, will get me to the next level of my career? And therefore, am I being competitive um, with those around me? Um, when there's promotional opportunities there, you know, think why you can do the new role, not why you can't. Be aware of that one. That one tricks women a lot as well, you know. So again, I suffer from that, you know, so I can give you 10 reasons why I shouldn't do a job um, rather than maybe the 10 reasons why I should. So um, try um, try your best to be positive for yourself as well, because you know that often those that you're competing with are going to be more in that headspace of thinking of all the reasons why they are the perfect person to do the role. And from my point of view, you know, we, we have enough barriers in front of us. We don't need to put our own barriers in place as well. Um, a, a recent um, Women in the Workplace study outlined that women always they have this concept of feeling on all the time and that the, the boundaries between work and home have been very blurred. And that's been even more so during the pandemic. Um, we all feel that, don't we, that it's hard since you've not had the commute time. It's been harder to know when you're starting work and stopping work. And those um, with small children and families, you know, the whole thing is just blurred into one big lump, which I think, you know, from a health and well-being point of view has maybe added to the pressure on, on women and increased the possibility of burnout. And the general concern is that women might choose to step out of the workplace rather than carry on and concentrate on your career. So again, my ask is if, if that's you, so if, if you're feeling that you're feeling burnt out and that your career is the thing that's taking the step back and you know the sticky floor in this scenario is the fact that your life is in the way, then talk to the people around you, um, look for help. Um, maybe take some time out for sure, but don't give up on your career. Put your career in the list of things that are important as well as everything else. Um, companies invest heavily in their employees. You're important to the company. So your boss, if you're in a good company, your boss will listen and want you to do the best um, by your career and to get on. So, um, you know, you need to unstick yourself from the floor would be um, my advice. So, so are you stuck to the floor? You know, how do you tell? Do you feel as though you've um, you've been in the same role for too long and you get frustrated in the workplace, but you don't know why? Then chances are um, you are not necessarily prioritising your career against all the other difficult things you've got going on in your life and your career has gone down the stack a little bit. Um, my ask to you is to think, right, well, you know, I am important. I should do some training. I should get a career plan. I should look for a mentor. Um, yeah, I should join women's networks and groups in order to, to talk to like minded people in order to progress. Um, if you're in the position where you're out of the, the workforce entirely um, for reasons of uh, looking after others, children, family members, etc., and want to come back in, then rejoining the, the, the workforce um, is, is a great opportunity and look at what career you want. This is an opportunity to reset. Certainly in my sector around digital skills, for example, there's lots of fantastic opportunities to, to come back and do something different and unstick yourself from the, maybe the career pathway you were on before and maybe look to do something different. Um, look for organisations that offer hybrid working because that might help you unstick yourself in that work-life balance by having more time to work the hours that work. Um, look for um, organisations that have um, supportive um, structures, you know, communities for part-time workers, uh, people returning to work, etc. But also, you know, different groups of uh, people from different walks of life, um, mature, proper organisations, respect that, you know, they want you to bring your whole self to work. And therefore, when you do 
um, pick an organisation if you're coming back into the workplace, then, then pick wisely again, as we said at the beginning, you know, look, look for organisations that don't have glass ceilings and then create your own plan so that you're not guilty of, of being on the sticky floor. So, you know, from, from that point of view, um, just to summarise, glass ceilings, yeah, they do exist, don't they? Um, but they don't necessarily exist everywhere. So work hard when you're looking for a new role to pick an organisation where that isn't the case. Absolutely, pay is important and conditions are important, but also career opportunities are more important um, than ever for us all, no matter what point we are in our lives. And my ask is that you use it, your time to research and investigate your organisation, not just on who their clients are, etc., but also on what their opportunities are for women in the workplace and make sure that that, that is um, right at the top of the list with all the other things that you're looking at. Um, my second thing that I um, ask is that um, the glass ceiling, um, there's a glass ceiling index that measures the environment um, for working women and um, takes data from higher education, uh, labour force participation, childcare costs, maternity, pay rights, etc. Um, and it brings all that data together and gives you a view um, for jobs. Um, there's a unit of measure here and that can be applied to individuals and organisations. So it is a good indicator of whether a glass ceiling exists. So look into that as well. Um, it's important um, that you you think to yourself, this organisation is a, the right place for me and my career and this is where I want to be. Now, once you've done that, then look at the sticky floor thing and think to yourself, right, well, I'm only I'm at work a lot of time. You know, we spend a large amount of our days at work and, you know, none of us do that and should be miserable. So you need to land in a place that makes you happy, that you're surrounded by great people and that it's the right place for you. But also you need to be mentally happy and therefore you need to know that you've got a career and that you're responsible for that career. So you every year you should make sure that you've got um, objectives that you understand what they are that you talk to your manager about it and when you have your performance review you you tackle that with open eyes and think to yourself yeah I'm, I'm on this this is the journey I'm going this is how I move from one level to another your organization will have career pathways make sure you understand where you are on that and how you move up through the organization role models are really important um, in the organization but it's it's important that we when we get to a certain level in in our lives and our careers that we offer that um, facility as well and that we become role models and it took me quite a while to recognize that I ought to do that but I do fully get that you know you need people in the organization who've reached a level who put a hand down and pull the next person up and we should all be responsible for putting a hand down and pulling the next person up and offering um, to be a role model. Um, that doesn't mean that you as an individual can't go look for a mentor um, and you should look for a mentor who at that moment in your career and your life is the right person to help you move on and up. Um, you won't necessarily have the same mentor throughout the whole of your career but you know for me I think you know finding somebody who you can talk to and talk things through is really important. Um, and someone who's been bold in their careers and made wise decisions would be my suggestion. Um, and then you can find that that person is someone to turn to as you think about your career and how you move on. Um, and then once you've you've done that, then, you know, you, you know you're on a journey and you're, you're moving up in your career. If you then get to the point where you th think you can't go any further, then you're aware that whether your organisation has a sticky um, whether it's sticky floor or glass ceiling, you can take a view yourself as to who's in charge here. You know, the glass ceiling is largely the organisation that's in charge. The sticky floor is really up to you. So um, my advice is to be completely aware of your situation um, be aware of, of um, where you are in your career and be aware of whether or not you have self-imposed a sticky floor, not deliberately, I'm sure life is big, you know, and it gets in the way of a lot of things that we do. But, you know, the choice of who you work for, and how you spend your time is yours and always yours. So choose wisely, um, and choose a company that matters, because they're very lucky to have you. And my top tip is to, you know, manage your career, um, and be um, happy and, and and enjoy your work, but be thoughtful about that. Watch out for those um, glass ceilings for sure, but even more, be careful not to get stuck on that sticky floor.